Hey everybody, you're watching Geek This Week, and today I'm here with... Max Hartley. And of course, I'm Talon, and today we're bringing you all the geeky news on... D&D's 45th anniversary. Sneaking a peek at Schrodinger's cat. NES mice. All on Geek This Week. This week in gaming, Dungeons & Dragons has turned 45 and the esteemed D&D 5th edition is now 5 years old. So, Wizards of the Coast is releasing an absolutely gorgeous set of sapphire dice on November 21st. The full set of dice will cost $300, and only 1,974 sets will be created. Nathan Stewart, the vice president in charge of the D&D franchise, said that once they realize that sapphire is a traditional anniversary stone for both 5 and 45 years, and they discovered that adding a laboratory-created sapphire to a D20 wouldn't jeopardize the integrity of the roll, they couldn't pass up the opportunity to put together this absolutely gorgeous set. I mean, look at it. Just look at it. It's beautiful. Ugh, oh, love it. If you manage to get your hands on a set, you'll receive the set in the custom dice box that doubles as a dice tray, alongside with a premium foldout with the stats and art of a sapphire dragon. You'll also get an exclusive anniversary sticker of the D&D ampersand, and of course, a certificate of authenticity. I don't know if I'll be able to drop my paycheck on this, but I might anyways. This week in movies, the entire lineup of movies on Disney Plus is now available to be watched. Disney also doubled up on the Marvel movies that you can watch on the service. Offering 16 movies starting this Tuesday, Iron Man 2, all the Captain America movies, Thor, Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Doctor Strange, and their new series, Expanding the Universe. Not only are we now receiving double the movies that were teased on release for Disney+, Plus, we're also getting some deleted scenes from Avengers Endgame, including a very heartfelt and tear-jerking moment between Tony Stark and his grown-up daughter. The scene was cut from the cinematic release by the Russos because they found it to be confusing for audiences. We don't want to spoil the deleted scene, but we do suggest if you have Disney+, Plus, watch it. Also, following the culturally dividing and controversial opinion of Martin Scorsese saying that Marvel movies are not cinema, Kevin Feige has finally broken his silence. Feige, of course, disagreed with Scorsese, saying himself he doesn't think that's true. And it's unfortunate that Scorsese feels the way he does. He added, I think myself and everyone who works on these movies loves cinema. Loves movies, loves going to movies, loves to watch a communal experience in a movie theater full of people. Like, Feige also argued that Marvel has been making different types of movies, like Ant-Man as a heist film, and then Captain America The Winter Soldier as a political thriller. Feige didn't hesitate to point out that in Civil War, the two most popular characters get into a very serious theological and physical altercation. We're with you, Feige. And we hope that with the full release of Disney+, Plus, Disney is now in a very powerful position to produce an insane amount of content for us to dissolve into. But don't worry, we'll still be here every week, just in puddle form. We're getting a fourth movie from the esteemed James Dean. Kind of. The actor died in a car accident in 1955 at the very young age of 24. And now he's going to be digitally reconstructed to appear in a full feature-length movie, Finding Jack. The filmmakers Anton Ernst and Tati Golik received permission from James Dean's family to use his likeness in the upcoming movie. This decision has only created a tiny bit of conflict on the internet with some major actors like Chris Evans and Elijah Wood commenting on it with disapproval. With de-aging like Samuel L. Jackson in Captain Marvel or digital doubles like Will Smith in Gemini Man becoming very popular in Hollywood recently, I can't say it's too surprising that making a full-length movie with a CGI-created actor from a previous generation of films is coming. We'll let you guys decide if you agree or disagree to digitally revive this man who is too fast to live and too young to die to headline a truly modern movie. OpenAI has published the text-generating demon AI that they said was too dangerous to release into the wild. The GP2 system was announced way back in February, but was not released for fear of its ability to create and spread fake news, spam, and disinformation. So, over the course of the previous 10 months, OpenAI has released a smaller version of GP2 and has been studying the reception and use. They came to the conclusion that there was no strong evidence of misuse, and so the whole thing is now free to use by anyone. 
GP2 is a form of text-generating AI that can form coherent responses with very minimal prompts. This system was trained by reading 8 million documents from all over the web. And as such, you can feed it a fake headline and it will write an entire article for you. Or feed it a poem title and it will write a poem for you. OpenAI promises to watch the development of GP2's development and usage in the wild, adapting its policies and responsible publications of AI research accordingly. I think it's clear that AI is trying to take over the world. Between deepfakes and now text writing AIs, we're all doomed to obey our more efficient computer overlords. I, I'm sorry, did I, did I say overlords? I, I meant protectors, guys. I meant protectors, obviously. This week in tech, if you're into awful computer peripheral design, you'll love 8 Do's new N30 mouse. The 2.4 gigahertz wireless mouse looks like someone crushed an NES controller to use it in one hand. Given that Nintendo's original console was released 34 years ago, the mouse seems to pay homage to the NES. The design brought to us via Swedish industrial designer Daniel Jansen was released in a foam version back in 2009. And a decade later, 8 Do's teamed up with him to bring the $25 mouse to reality. They boast the mouse has a 100 to 120 hour battery life off its single AA. Look, it's not a pretty mouse, but it's pretty dope. And it's cheap. And it's wireless, unlike its inspiration. So I'm all for it. This week in science. Scientists have found a way to peek at the state of Schrodinger's cat without killing it permanently. In a recent thought experiment, scientists Katrick Patikar and Holger F. Hoffman, published in the New Journal of Physics, which will be linked down below, have found a way to potentially peek at the mysterious behavior of subatomic particles without forcing them into an observable state. When put into a box with poison, Schrodinger's cat exists in a superposition between neither dead or alive until you open the box to observe the cat. The main goal of the experiment is to look very carefully at the way that quantum measurements happen. And the key point is to separate the measurement into two steps. Doing this allows the photons that carry information about the state of an object to be observed in the initial reaction that are captured without losing any information about the state of the cat or the object you're observing. The idea is to know everything about the state of the cat because all the actual science is way over my head. The breakdown is this. Imagine you have a camera that you can take a picture of the inside of the box. After a picture is taken, you have two kinds of information. How the cat has changed as a result of the picture and if the cat is dead or alive. No information about the state of the cat is lost until you develop the image so you can choose how, what you want to see. Hoffman, to put it more simply in an interview with Live Science, it's like a coin flip. You have the option to know the coin is flipped or if the result is head or tails. You don't get to know both. But if we could know both, there is a potential to reverse the state of the object. In the case of the coin, you would flip it over. It's a crazy thought experiment that has an absurd amount of math involved, but if we emulate this practically, there are some pretty big implications for quantum computing. I'm ridiculously excited to see some further results and responses to the science article. <sighs> well, that's all from Geek This Week today. We we'll hope you all enjoyed the episode, but what did you think of the episode, Max? I just want that dice, man. Oh my just God. Want that dice set. Always with the, the dice. dice. It's a sapphire. It's, it's a sapphire in the 20. That it's is an a, amazing that critical is all, feel. It's that so is amazing. all you've talked about for like the last four hours. I love blue. There's so much it's more so stuff good. here. Like I, what about Schrodinger's I, cat? I don't care. I can't roll Schrodinger's cat oh, and get a crit on the dragon with a sapphire. Well, that's all from us this week. We hope everyone enjoyed the episode. We love the dice, but don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And we will see you all next week. Bye-bye.